How's it going everybody? My name is Philip, and today we're doing something a little bit different. This is a little bit historical type of uh, disaster, I guess, in a sense. Um, this is what really happened at the Hillsborough disaster. Um, I don't really know anything about it. Uh, just looking at uh, the jersey. It's either Arsenal or Liverpool. I don't think that's Manchester United. Uh, I'm, I think it's Liverpool. I think I heard a little bit about it, and I think it, I'm pretty sure it's Liverpool. Um, I don't really know anything else. <laughs> Obviously, it was a disaster. So something crazy happened. Something ridiculous. Something that probably could have been avoided easily. But uh, you know, just it it, it didn't happen that way. <laughs> It, it, it wasn't something that was easy to handle, I guess. I don't know where I'm going. I think I'm just losing my mind to set right now. Um, <laughs> but I don't know what to expect. I, I don't really know, again, what teams. Obviously, it's either Arsenal or Liverpool. Again, pretty sure it's not Manchester United. Um, but uh, let's check it out. Okay. Nin explains what's really happened at the Hillsborough disaster. Tell me. The Hillsborough disaster is one of the most tragic events in English football history. Oh damn, they're climbing really up the... Uh, ...on the day where 96 the second tier. fans lost their lives. Jeez. The story begins Saturday the 15th of April... Oh, that makes sense, because of the jersey. And it's the FA Cup semi-final between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest. Liverpool, gotcha. It's due to kick off at 3pm, and the match is being held at Hillsborough, the home stadium of Sheffield Wednesday. It's a sellout, and all 54,000 tickets have been sold. Okay. By noon, fans have started to arrive, and Liverpool supporters have been allocated the west end of Hillsborough that keeps them away from the Nottingham Forest fans arriving from the south. This also means that Liverpool supporters will all have to pass through one entrance, Leppings Lane. 10,000 Liverpool supporters have tickets for the standing terraces, but they'll have to enter through just seven turnstiles. By 2pm, a little over 2,000 supporters have done so, meaning that 8,000 are still to come. With how much time In left? An hour before kickoff, after passing through the turnstiles, many fans go straight down the tunnel, leading into the central pens behind the goal, pens three and four. By quarter past two, a crowd is starting to build outside the stadium, and it increases rapidly over the next 15 minutes. Progress through the turnstiles is steady, but slow. And inside, a loudspeaker message asks the people on the terrace to move forwards and spread along sideways. Yo, so here's the thing. This is why you get there like an hour early. I don't know. Okay, so I don't know how different it is than here in the U.S. But a lot of the times, obviously, we don't have stand. We, I mean, we do have standing room only. But um, I guess it's a little bit different. It's not as much standing room. But like, at least with my parents, with us, like we get there almost now early like it's still like 40 minutes or something like that depends on traffic but we leave like so if the game starts at three we would have left at 12. <laughs> we get there which is obviously more than an hour but depending on traffic a lot of the times you get there closer to it's about an hour traffic 1 30 2 o'clock ish and then you spend about an hour getting food getting things ready you know going to use the bathroom so you don't have to get up that's just i mean obviously that's just us so, <laughs> yo, by the way, this light is making me look stupid white, but <clears throat> we get there early enough so that we can relax. We have time to mo walk around the stadium. If there's something we want to buy, we try not to, <laughs> but for the most part, we walk around. If we see someone we, we know, you know, my parents told me would stay and talk to them. I would continue to walk around like, oh, there's this. You know, at least at the Earthquake Stadium, they have, like, all these uh, food trucks lined up in the back. And if you want, you can go get go go to a food truck, get something to eat, whether it's barbecue, Korean, barbecue, or Hispanic, whatever. You know, there's literally, like, seven food trucks. It's, it's, in, it's insane. <clears throat> you can walk through the store, be like, oh, hey, look, guys, my birthday's coming up. Come, you know, but basically, you know, we get there hella early. So that we don't have to wait in line. And then if we're hungry, you know, we can go get food. You know, it's, it's just basically time management. And it just doesn't seem like it happened here. Which sucks. But high fences divide the pens 
and gates between them are at the back, so the more full pens become, the harder it is to switch pens. That the sucks. man in charge of the match, Chief Superintendent David Duckenfield, and another officer discuss whether to delay the kickoff to give people more time to enter the ground. Yeah, why not? They decide against doing so. Why? Outside, Liverpool supporters are pressing against the turnstiles, and by 2.45, only 5,000 fans are through, meaning that there are still more than 4,000 fans with tickets for the terraces outside the ground. Thousands are now packed into the Leppings Lane bottleneck. Okay, so that's one thing I'll say. If you got there early enough, or if you just got there, I mean, that's kind of fucked. Especially with only one area to go through. Like, why isn't... I don't Anyways, let's just continue. Stationed outside, Superintendent Roger Marshall makes several requests for the permission to open the exit gate to relieve the pressure. Inside the ground, central pens are filling up. Chief Superintendent Duckenfield gives the order and gate C is opened. Probably a bad idea. More than 1,400 fans head in through the gate and many head into the packed pens three and four. The gate remains open for about five minutes. The match kicks off just before 3 p.m. Yo, okay. So, for one, you opened it for five minutes. How many hundreds of people were able to get through? If not close to a thousand. Like, there is so many people out there waiting. Yo, what the and fuck? the crush at the front of the pens is getting dangerous. A barrier breaks in pen three, and people fall forwards, increasing the pressure on those at the front. Jeez. At this point, people are dying. The sheer weight of the amount of bodies in the pens causes asphyxiation, and people are suffocating to death due to the pressure. Jeez. People's faces are turning black and blue, and it's pretty obvious that this is now life and death. As the crush intensifies, some fans escape by climbing over the fence on the front. It's apparent that this is now an emergency, and the police stop the match at six minutes past three. Desperate people are lifted over the top yeah, of the fences, and fans what's... in the upper stand try to pull others to safety. Police try to free those at the front through the narrow gate near the pitch, but there are not enough stretchers, so supporters use advertising hoardings to carry the injured. Damn. Ambulances are slow to arrive and have a hard time getting to the injured fans due to the poor communication between themselves and the police. The first ambulance arrives at 3.14, but many of the fans are already dead. Damn. In total, 96 fans died as a result of the Hillsborough disaster, and out of those 96, only 14 ever made it to a hospital. Oh, wow. The rest died at the football ground, their bodies laid to rest inside a local gymnasium. In the aftermath, the police blame the fans, accusing them of being drunk and disorderly. That's some bullshit. Like, as much as... That fact right there was true, whether they ha were drunk and disorderly. You had a good system going on. It was just going to take a little bit longer. You just chose the easy way out to make things go faster. So it's not on the fans. It's the fact that you guys allowed that to happen. If you just kept it going where, you know, the game delayed by a 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever... That would have been easily avoidable, but because you wanted to avoid get you know loosen the pressure a little bit on on all the fans and whatnot, <clears throat> how many of them didn't even have tickets? That's another thing. So because you allowed so many people in without tickets, I mean that's on you. And suggesting that the crowd surge was due to the thousands of fans turning up without tickets. They you also indicate that it was the fans who were responsible for forcing open gate C. This and many other stories absolving the police of responsibility were fed to the media. Yeah, that's stupid. In particular, to the most popular newspaper at the time, The Sun, who, in typical tabloid fashion, sensationalized the news and paraded these lies from the police as the truth, You're which did not on endear cops? them to anyone in the city of Liverpool. In 1989, an investigation led by Justice Peter Taylor sought to find out the real cause of the disaster. And later that next year, the Taylor Report came out. They recommended complete reforms of football stadiums across the country, and is the reason why there are no more standing terraces in English football. Huh, okay, In 1991, an inquest into the deaths of fans concluded that the deaths were accidental, but the relatives of the deceased were not happy with this decision. Yeah, I wouldn't be happy either, though. 
Over 25 years of fighting and lawsuits ensued, and a new inquest in 2009, led by the Hillsborough Independent Panel, reopens the case. They find okay. that... So, one thing that I've always thought was very interesting is when cases get reopened, like, decades later, it's like, how do you find new evidence? I'm sure he's going to go over it here. But, like, how is it that... Like, like, here's my thing. Like, from let's say for murders, specifically murders. I get that we have new technology, but how do you find new evidence? Okay, so we found, we have the knife, we have the murder weapon, we have the fingerprints, we have this and that. New evidence, you know, I, I hear all the time, new evidence is found. Do they just find something different on the knife and, and murder weapon and, and through testimonies and through this and that? Because obviously if they go back and, and re-interview the, the, the people... Some people might not have the best memories of the moment. I mean, some might, but some might not. I don't know. I just always think it's a bit strange how they just find new evidence. Like, are they looking Are they looking at things a little bit more specifically? Like, I don't know. I mean, this is also, I'm not a cop, so uh, clearly. So, like, I'm just... <clears throat> it's, just in, it, it's interesting that all of a sudden... After 20 years, after a decade or two, or whatever it may be, new evidence is found after you look through the same evidence that they had before. So either someone was being neglectful and wasn't really paying attention, or they're hiding something, you know? And and new eyes, obviously, yeah. Police reports have been changed and or sanitized <laughs> okay. to resolve them all blame. Okay. There had been an obvious cover-up, and the police have been caught red-handed. Okay. A new, new round of inquests gotcha. begins, and more than 800 eyewitnesses were called to testify in one of the longest cases in British legal history. In 2016, seven years after reopening the case, the jury overturns the initial decision of accidental death okay. and finds that the 96 fans were unlawfully killed on that day, and that Superintendent Duckenfield's actions, the police, and the slow response of the ambulances contributed to the loss of life. 41 of the 96 fans could have been saved if the police responded more oh, rapidly wow, that's a instead good of standing of by and waiting on orders. As a random side note, despite an apology from the Sun newspaper, the newspaper is still not sold in the city of Liverpool. Wow. The people don't buy it and the shops refuse to sell it. So that's in fair. a nutshell, this is exactly what happened at the Hillsborough disaster. And these are facts that you can easily verify. But who was really to blame for this disaster? It's my humble opinion that the inadequate organization from the police and the stadium design is what caused the disaster. Liverpool fans are not to blame for what happened here That's 100%, on that yeah. fateful day. Now, regulars of my channel will know that I'm a Manchester United fan, and at this point of the video, I'd like to apologize unreservedly for the behavior of some of our fans. Hmm. A small minority of us United fans chant about Hillsborough, and I personally find it to be very disgusting, and certainly not indicative of the majority of Manchester United fans out there. So if you have been offended by one of ours, I deeply apologize. But there are still some theories out there that could still pin the blame on Liverpool fans, and I'll try and address those now. The theory okay. that fans were drunk, and this is what contributed hmm. yeah, to the okay, disaster. Yes. A decent one, As you I tell from the police reports, they pin the blame on Liverpool fans being drunk and disorderly. And when the 96 fans' autopsies were done, they made special care to take the blood alcohol levels of these fans. Now, obviously, this caused a bit of a stir with the families of the deceased, but if we were to use this as a cross section of fans, out of those 96 fans, only six of them were deemed to have alcohol levels which could indicate That's that they not may enough. have been intoxicated. That is not enough. If you do the quick maths, it's just over 6%. Now, 6% of a football crowd having alcohol in them is an incredibly low number, so the police theory that the vast majority of the fans were drunk is simply not true, because 6% is an incredibly low number. The theory that thousands turned up without tickets, and this is what contributed to the crush, Back in the day, it was commonplace to try and sneak into football matches, especially during popular games like the FA Cup semi-final, etc. And the police argued that thousands of fans turned up without tickets. 
Obviously, this was a really stupid move as nobody checked if these guys had tickets or not. Yeah. But the overall theory remains that there were thousands without tickets that attended that game that day. To combat this theory, what they did is that they looked at the CCTV footage and paused it frame by frame and counted every head. The actual number that went through gate C, 1400, which wow. is less than the thousands that the police alleged and it's actually about the right number that could have stood in those terraces. It's about right, the figures do add up. So the theory that thousands of fans turned up without tickets is simply bogus. Okay. The theory that it's the Liverpool fans' fault because this has never happened before. Actually, it has. Eight years earlier, at a similar semi-final between Tottenham Hotspur and Wolverhampton, the exact same scenario played out. And it was almost the Tottenham fans that got crushed to death. Almost. On that day, the police allowed the overflow to actually sit on the field behind the goals, and this prevented the crushing of hundreds of fans. Now, at the time, this was a non-event. Nobody reported on it because nobody died, but the fact that it happened eight years earlier with a completely different team indicates that this is not a problem specific to Liverpool fans. The only yeah. theory that cannot rightfully be debunked is the fact that the Liverpool fans were actually trying to push their way into the stadium. If we take a close look at the CCTVs, you can clearly see that the Liverpool fans are trying to push in. It, it's there in black and white, you, you can't yeah. dispute this. Now, if they're pushing outside the stadium, when there's no reason to push at all, what are they doing inside the stadium? And furthermore, the other theory that cannot be debunked, I'm sorry to have to bring this up, this is the elephant in the room, the Hazel disaster. The Hazel disaster is a similar stadium crush where Liverpool fans <laughs> breached a neutral gate and it caused Juventus fans to flee and crush 39 of their own fans. Liverpool fans were found to be 100% guilty of this and it got England banned for five years in Europe and then for six years. This huh. cannot be ignored. And I know it's a separate incident, but it's possible that those same sets of fans were in attendance that day. And it's also possible that if they have that sort of mentality, that it's possible that that sort of mentality played out on this day. Obviously, there's no outright proof of this, and here in England, you're innocent until proven guilty, so technically innocent they are. My final thoughts. My final thoughts is that Liverpool fans are not to blame for this disaster. Yeah. Poor policing and bad stadium management contributed significantly more than any other factor. And rightly so, in an inquest where they actually found the police cover-ups, the, the right people were brought to justice. So I am of the opinion that Liverpool fans were not to blame. But that's not the question I want you to take away from this video. The question I want you to ask is that can every fan in attendance that day be 100% blameless for what's happened at Hillsborough? Is it solely the police's fault? Is it solely the stadium design? Or maybe, just maybe, there's a small group of fans out there with the blood of 96 people on their hands? I can't answer that question. But yeah, maybe you that's can. definitely an interesting question. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching. So that, that's definitely a, a, a great question. It's interesting that it's happened before in the same stadium. It's happened before, and yet the police handled it wonderfully from what he's said. So that makes, so obviously using that evidence, you know, you could say, oh, well, it is Liverpool fans. You know, and especially if you team, if you add that up with what happened, what he said Juventus. So if you add those two together, you know, then you could definitely blame Liverpool fans. But also, it's actually, it's hard to fully come to a conclusion because you're not there. And, 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 Plus the police cover up, so that also doesn't help. It's just there's so much going on that it's just hard to fully decide on what what actually happened, especially because you don't know. <laughs> we can't go back in time, and 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 see. 
granted, I'm sure a lot of there's gonna be a good chunk of people that want to go back in time to try and stop it, which I mean, that's fair. But like, it goes unsolved. <laughs> like it's 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 just it's just that simple, I guess. Maybe not simple. Simple is probably not the right word to use. It's just that complicated that it's it goes unsolved or a hundred percent unsolved. Like it's solved for the most part of we're blaming the police because of the cover up and this and that. But how much of it is to blame on Liverpool fans overcrowding? And part of it because he did mention how the barrier, one of the barrier barricades, barriers or whatever collapsed and that could have been a big issue that that started pushing people towards it but that wouldn't it's just it's just one of those things where that wouldn't push people to the point of death you fall and then you get back up you know it wouldn't be like you fall and you stay there for like 10 minutes and be like oh okay sorry i fell you know it, it's one of those oh sorry sorry i fell and then you get up you, you dust yourself off or whatever you want to do. If you hurt your knee, you're like, ooh, my knee, ow, okay. And, and then you're good. So it's it's a rough one. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. It's terrible that it happened. But it's... It's just one of those that just leaves you scratching your head. <laughs> I don't know. It's definitely interesting. Let me know what your guys' thoughts and theories are. Like, what, which 100%, like, are you, like, more leaning towards which one, like, which theory you're leaning towards and and whatnot? So, uh, let me know. I, 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 I don't know. Like I said, if they just left the gates closed, then I need to check out that other one that that he was talking about with Juventus. Is if there's, if there's a video on that, I think... I think there's this one right here. The Hazel disaster, I think that's what he was saying. So I'll, I'll check that one out next. And it has to do with Liverpool again. So I don't know what's going on with whether it's Liverpool fans or just the club. Maybe it's because they were laughing about Manchester United team dying in a, in a plane crash. Maybe this is their karma. Which kind of sucks. But, I mean, yeah. It, it's, it's definitely quite interesting uh let me know what you guys thoughts are in the comment section below subscribe for more content just like this uh i want to do more history historical sports stuff kind of related and 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 disasters or, or interesting facts or players in general i i do plan on getting into the messy is a god video or something like that is a goat messy the goat or something shit like that i don't remember uh i, I think i have it saved but uh, let me know in the comment section below what else I should react to. And uh, I will see you guys next time. See you later.